Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to be checking out the JXD. Uh, this is a new, newer version of this guy. This is the um, 506G model. It's got 5.8 gigahertz FPV, and apparently in this model, I know there was a 510 model, but this model actually has uh, supposedly a remote tilt camera, a little bit better of a camera here, and you can adjust it remotely to tilt. What we're going to be doing is unboxing this right here in the living room and then I'm going to take everything back to the inspection bench and do a really up close um, high def inspection of all the components. Then we're going to take it out to the park, fly it and do a pros and cons. So stay tuned for all that. We'll be doing that in just a second. But this is just taking out of the box here and seeing what we get in the box since the box is so big. It's a little bit too big for my um, inspection bench area. If you are interested in this guy, go ahead and don't forget I'll have the link down in the description of where you can check out the current pricing and all the specs on this guy. So don't forget to click that link down there below the video to check that out. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and start the unboxing. Uh, looks like we have everything that comes in the box here and it is a 7.4 volt so this will be a higher power more punch um, kind of craft than the 3.7 volt but let's go ahead and open this thing up um, just spinning it around here before I open that up so this is the version I got this is the 5.8 gigahertz FPV with the screen uh, there's also a W version which has the ability to just to connect to your cell phone so um, let's go ahead and take this out, see what it's all about. This one also is supposed to have the altitude hold as well. Wow, so a pretty large craft here. Um, let's go ahead and take off this tape and there's the initial piece of plastic there. And let's see, so a little bag of goodies here. Got props, prop nuts, all kinds of stuff in there. And here it is, wow, this thing's a beast. Pretty interesting color scheme. Gray, it looks like it has brushed motors. So this is gonna be like a competitor to the SEMA X8G style quadcopter. It'll be a little bit larger, 350 size. And let's go ahead and open everything up. Um, but basically that's the quad there. Again, I'm just gonna take everything out here and then we'll go back to the bench and inspect everything in a little more detail. Anyway, prop guards, so put those on if you're a beginner. If you're not a beginner, you'll get more flight time and less wind resistance if you can take those off. Bag of goodies here with some antennas, chargers, screwdrivers, screws, all kinds of stuff in that little baggie. Flipping this guy over, wow, okay, so here's all the extra stuff. So we get our FPV screen here. Uh, it looks like that's going to mount onto our controller with a bracket. And there's our controller. FPV screen, instruction manuals here. And a few more things in the box. Take off this tape here. Here's our charger. Looks like, looks like I got the Euro version, so I'll need to be putting a US adapter on there to charge. Looks like this is for the screen actually. Uh, maybe not. That's too big for the screen. This is for this. Yes. Sorry. That's going to be the charger there. And that's going to charge your 2S battery. Landing gear. So two very large landing gear. Looks like those just will screw up right to the bottom there. And last but not least is the camera. Looks like that's everything in the box. So this is that camera that's going to, oh yeah, cool. So you can hear that, hear that in the mic. It does have a servo in there, a little mini servo or something that is gonna enable you to remote tilt. And it looks like this has got the whole FPV system built in. I've seen this little antenna hanging down, 5.8 gigahertz. So this is gonna be neat. This is gonna be really cool. We've got two plugs. We'll be plugging that into the bottom of the craft. Probably one's for the FPV and then one's gonna be for the remote tilt. Um, cool, so I'm really anxious. This thing's super light. Barely weighs anything, um, but anyway. That's everything you get in the box. Let's go ahead and take all this stuff back over on the bench. We have a nice white background with 
uh, really high definition camera and we can get in close and just look everything look at everything set it all up and then we'll take it out to the park do our flight test and the pros and cons okay we got the JXD 506 G on the bench and we're gonna go ahead and set this thing up so first of all here's the craft itself pretty cool looks like kind of a Klingon looking spaceship or something from Star Trek kind of interesting and uh, I'm not going to be putting on the prop guards but here's how you put them on just so you guys know you just take this little plug out and slide the prop guard in do this if you're like a beginner it's gonna fall out unless you put on two screws that are included in the bag so you've got one two here that actually go ahead and uh, connect to those screw holes and we'll hold your prop guards in so go ahead and put those on if you're a beginner just to save yourself from any kind of damaged propellers or um, damaging anything around you. I'm not going to put these on because I'm a little bit more of an advanced flyer or an intermediate flyer for that matter. And uh, as far as these things go, these are these little plugs here and it's totally up to you if you wanted to leave them in or take them out. I'd say, you know what, I'm just going to leave them out just because they're going to be a little more drag and it seems like that these motors are going to get a little more cooling if you do leave these out. So I'm going to go ahead and opt to just leave these out. You will see kind of this little opening here so if that bothers you just go ahead and put those back in but uh, I'm gonna opt to leave them out anyway that's the craft uh, top and here's the bottom here uh, looks like it's gonna be really simple to just slide the landing gear in here here's where the camera clips on here's the battery compartment that just pops down here let's go ahead and pull this battery out real quick just so we can get a close-up shot of this thing okay so it's looking like a 25c 7.4 volt 2000 milliamp lithium polymer battery with this type of connector here and then we have our balance connector here for charging okay so the first thing I want to do is put the landing gear on so I'm gonna go ahead and flip this thing over and go ahead and pop this landing gear in so it's kind of a um, type of landing gear that's gonna be kinda of staggered from front to back so you're gonna to wanna to make sure the long part is more towards the front like so and that just slides right into these little um, recesses. Really easy, nice and firm and tight going in there. They've just got one screw each. So if you look really closely in there, it might be kind of hard to see in this light, but there is a screw hole down in there. So we're just gonna screw those in with one screw each with the uh, included screws that come in the bag. And as far as this bag goes, it looks like we get a bunch of stuff in here. So we have the charger for the FPV monitor that's going to plug in there to charge it USB charger and then we have a couple of the monitor brackets the monitor antenna that's to connect it to your controller which we'll go over in a sec two screwdrivers looks like we got two different sizes we have our SD card reader USB reader so you can put your video in your computer and check out the videos that's a 4 gig card and then we've got all our screw bags so here's where we're gonna um, be checking out what we need to actually screw in the um, the landing gear so these are uh, labeled and actually in English so mobile phone holder screws so we're gonna put that on the side for a sec this one is the foot rack so I imagine that since it says foot uh, that is going to be our landing gear this one here is the protective cover so that's gonna be our um, prop guards I'm not gonna be using that one but we are going to be using these two so let's go ahead and op open this up and put our landing gear on so interestingly they do give you quite a few screws for your landing gear we are only going to be needing uh, two of these so I'll go ahead and take two out of here and it looks like the bigger screwdriver will probably work best for this one so it may be a little difficult to get these screws going so I'm gonna just kind of take up off the landing gear until I can kind of get these screws sorted in these holes so what I would recommend is doing that first and then go ahead and get the landing gear and just hold the screw in with a screwdriver and as you push it down in then go ahead and screw that screw in just so it's kind of easier to put it all together that's kind of how it looks with the landing gear on and while we're at it let's go ahead and put the camera on here so we're gonna grab our camera and it looks like it's fairly simple right on the back there we can see that we have a little micro SD card slot and um, this is actually the the antenna and the 
video transmitter and the camera is all built into this unit. Really light unit. I'm barely feeling any weight to it. But anyhow, let's go ahead and put the micro SD card in. Looks like that's not the way. It looks like the um, the bottom is going to be facing the FPV antenna. So the bottom of the SD card is towards the antenna. Just clip that in and that's ready to go. So this is going to be cool. As you can see, you can hear that you can kind of hear that gearing in there. That's an actual servo, a mini servo. So we will be able to control the tilt from the transmitter. So this is going to be very interesting. Just make sure that you have the camera in this forward orientation. And then we have this little notch here that we just slide the groove down into. We hear that clip and that's in there. So really nice and firm and tight. No problem. You want to take the camera out. You just push this little, this little button on the back. There's a little button here and then you can just slide that camera um, back forward and that comes right out. So let's zoom into these connections real quick. So it looks like on the Wi-Fi version, that's where you'd plug in the Wi-Fi transmitter, but that's like plugged on this one. So we only can plug into this other one here that says uh, FC is what that's saying. So let's go ahead and plug in to that one. Then we have this other cable hanging off the camera and that's probably going to be for the servo and what I'm seeing here on the other side here is it's saying TWO machine so I'm going to assume that's where we plug in the camera I should probably be checking the instruction manual before I power all this up just so I don't short anything and this also does have an on-off switch you can see here on the bottom left where my thumb is We've got this on off switch, so that's kind of cool. You can plug in your battery. You don't have to be powered up right when you plug in your battery. So looking at the controller and just really quickly running through some of the controls. Of course, throttle, and I am noticing, check this out, it is a spring-loaded throttle. So that means that's telling me that probably, hopefully, when we do are in the air and we have this off like this, it's going to be hovering using a barometer to hover. And we have our, our yaw left and right to turn the head. And then we have our pitch forward and back and our roll left and right. Okay, cool. And this one actually does have a labeling all around the buttons here so you can figure out what they do. And there's also labeling on the throttle trim. So I'm assuming that's the camera adjustment. So you can probably push this up and down and you'll be able to tilt the camera remotely. We have a rate button here. Just click it in and we have our flipping button here. This one also does flips. So if you did fly out, we'll try this in the, in the flight test, of course, and you press that, it should come back in your general direction, depending on its bearing. Urgency stop, not sure what that does. Perhaps it shuts the propellers off or does an auto land. We'll also test that out. Start stop, I assume that's either turning off and on the propellers or lifting off or landing. We'll also be testing that out and that's going into headless mode where you can be kind of in any direction having the craft in any direction and then pulling back will always make the craft come back camera so taking snapshots presumably and starting and stopping video on that button so those are all the features of the controller there let's go ahead and take out this screw here it looks like this one unfortunately does have a screw in here but um just like all the other toy quads you'll probably never need to put that screw back in and yeah, that thing is nice and tight. We won't need to put that back in. Four AA batteries is what it takes. Okay, and while we're on the subject of the controller, let's go ahead and connect this FPV screen to the controller. Here we see we have a little plastic uh, film protector on the screen. Just gonna peel this off real quick. There we go. So it looks like it does have a pretty shiny finish screen. And I'm thank goodness they give us this sun hood I always love companies that are going to include some kind of screen to have some kind of sun hood and I think all manufacturers should include this little cheap sun hood just for outdoor flying. You can see how the controller has this little rib notch here so we want to make sure we match those ribs in there so it gets a nice tight bite and it doesn't fall off. So you just kind of push it all the way down on the bottom of the antenna and then the same thing with the top you just slide that right over and it makes a really nice and snug fit. So I'm just taking two screws and I'm just screwing in from the bottom here. I'm just going to place them both in there. Looks like they'll be easy to screw in. And then we're just going to go ahead and screw both of these sides nice and tight. To finish this install up for this guy, we just have this little 5.8 gigahertz whip antenna. We're going to screw right onto the top. 
Okay, let's go ahead and put some batteries in the controller. Uh, boot up the quadcopter and see what we get briefly before we get out there to do our flight test. Okay, there we go. So you turn on the craft first and then you bind the controller and the lights will stop blinking. You can see that we have a solid light on here and a solid light on the, on the controller. So there's our FPV. It looks really nice and clear and clean. And what we also want to check out what we also want to check out is we want to be checking the camera tilt. We want to see how this is going to work when we're flying. And it looks like it's just the throttle trim button. So as I press this button, you're going to see it kind of moving up and down in increments. Or I can kind of hold it. So that's full forward. And then I can hold it and it will slowly tilt down. So really cool. Pretty impressed by the lighting too. The lighting is, looks really good on this. Some quadcopters you can't see the lights from the side, so that's convenient. Um, you can see it from the bottom and the side very well. Um, even from the back, you can see how this light pod is dropping lower, so it shines through to the sides. Okay, so you know what I forgot to put on is check this out. This is a little camera vibration mount. It's got these little rubber balls in here. So let's go ahead and take off the camera and put this in between. That'll give us much it should give us much better, um, l much less vibration on our camera. So let's go ahead and take this thing off real quick. Put that vibration mount in between. So we're sliding the camera off and then we're just sliding this thing right on here where the camera would have mounted up. We hear that click. And then we're sliding the camera right in its place, right on the bottom. Same kind of connection. Now that's given us a lot more damping power. As you can see, they are giving us uh, eight propellers, so that's great. Um, I really commend companies that give you eight propellers because you know you're usually going to crash if you're a beginner, and these are usually these kinds of toy quadcopters are more geared towards the beginner that wants a larger quad, but wants that altitude hold and video function just to kind of get used to the quad before they move up and buy you know one that's a few hundred dollars or even upwards of a thousand dollars. So I want to match the A letter on the propeller to the A letter that's right on the top where the propeller mounts. So what we want to do is we want to screw this screw all the way in so it goes through the plastic of the propeller and also goes into that um, metal shaft of the propeller shaft and then stop so we can't really screw it on any tighter. And that's how you put that in. So we want to do this to all four propellers. Make sure you have the A on the A and the B on the Bs. And then for each propeller, they give you this little top cap. And it doesn't really matter which way you put these on. They're all the same, nice and tight. There's no screws or anything. You know, they may fly off in, event, in an event of a crash. So they do, give you, um, they do give you eight of these little things. So if you do lose some, at least you have four more. And that's it, guys. Let's go ahead and get out there to the park and give this thing a flight test and see how it does and go through some pros and cons while we're out there. All right, let's go fly this thing. Okay, guys, so we're at the park with the Challenger, the Klingon battleship looking quadcopter. And we're gonna see how this thing performs today. Got a full set of batteries in the controller, got the FPV monitor fully charged, and got the battery fully charged um, for the Challenger itself. And so let's go ahead and put this thing through its uh, flight test and then, then do kind of a final pros and cons and see how this thing does. So got a SD card that it comes with, micro SD in the camera. But anyway, let's go ahead and boot this thing up. So first thing you wanna do is plug it in. Make sure the switch on the bottom is off when you first plug in. And then go ahead and get your battery situated, all your wires tucked in there. Snap the battery door shut. And we should be ready to go. Gonna go ahead and power this guy on first. Hitting the power there. And then I'm gonna hit the FPV screen power on. And then the controller power on. So immediately we can see that we do have the FPV here. We're looking at the grass up and down to bind. So good to go there. I wanna make sure this camera is facing forward. So I'm pushing the throttle trim all the way up so it's level. So we're gonna do video on the bottom right hand button here. There we go. So I had to press it twice. I'm not sure if it didn't register that first time, but now we're seeing the timer tick away. So let's go ahead and start this thing up. So on the bottom left, we have this start stop button here. So I'm pressing that once. And now we should be able to take off. So let's go ahead and lift off by just pressing the 
throttle up. Cool. So there we go. So this is a rate one flight. Now this is an altitude hold quadcopter, so it's going to drift with the wind. Do have about maybe five mile per hour wind coming this from this direction towards us. So you can see how it's drifting back towards us here. But so far so good with the altitude hold. I'm not going to touch it for a bit. I'm just going to leave it here and see how well. I'm not going to touch the throttle and see how well it kind of hovers and keeps its altitude. So this is a rate one. You can see that how quick it is here. That's full pitch forward, full pitch left, full pitch right. So it looks like it's keeping its altitude actually very well. Um, yeah, so very impressed so far with this altitude hold. All the time we are recording video, so I'll have that up on the screen as well so you can see the video on board. I don't have any way to really record the FPV from this monitor, so occasionally I'm just going to be letting you guys kind of look at it here with my hat cam just so you can see the uh, the quality of that video. So anyway, let's go ahead. It's doing very good at hovering, so I'm going to go ahead and move over to um, punch test. So full throttle up. So that's what you can expect. Really slow. You know, this quad is mainly for a beginner kind of camera quad. Full throttle down. So you can see how incredibly slow it is at descending and ascending. Letting off took about a second to um, know that the throttle was let off coming down. But that's okay. Not too bad. Alright, what else can we do here? Let's go ahead and do um, try to get into our different rates of speed flight. So this top left button I'm hearing two clicks and so this is rate two flight. Ooh, you can see how it's dropping there. Let's see if it drops again. So I'm full pitch forward not too bad actually if I'm going into the wind it looks like it's dropping a bit because the wind is pushing the front it's got that kind of large cowling there on the front for cosmetic looks which probably doesn't help it push through the wind and let's see let's see if we have a rate three um, the yaw rate yeah so it is adjusting with each each rate of speed. So there's the um, here's the rate one yaw, rate two, and rate three is a little bit faster as well. So all three rates of us uh, of um, flight have a better yaw rate, faster yaw rate, and here is the rate three of flight as well. So much faster, maybe even a little too fast for it. But that does get up, get speed pretty quick. You're going to want to be quite a bit above the ground if you're going to fly fast in rate three. Let me go ahead and go back into rate two, just so we can fight the wind no problem and get some good camera footage. So far, so good. So I launched facing this direction. I want to go ahead and test some of the headless and return to home mode. So I believe I was facing directly that way. And so we're going to fly out here little ways out, maybe about 100 feet. And I'm going to go ahead and go into headless mode by pressing this right top silver key. That should be headless. And I'm pushing back and it's going to the right. So unfortunately, this one got a little skewed. So you can see down is going to the right. It should be more towards its exact launch direction but that's not working so I'm gonna go out of, out of headless mode and I have a feeling that um, return to home is gonna be the same thing so let's just try return to home and see if it works so the top left button here pressing it once and you can see how it's going to the right so that is completely out of whack and I did launch facing this direction on the initial launch so wouldn't trust this one at all in its um, headless or return to home, just like most of these toy quads. Uh, so don't use that unless you want it to get lost. Anyway, let's do some other functions here. So this one actually does flips, I believe. So let's just try a few flips. It's with this right trigger, we're going to go ahead and press press it in and then 
press in one direction. Whoa. <laughs> so that was a flip, but oh my goodness. It just whacked the ground. Let's try that again. Let's get some height here. Trigger into the right. Yeah, so I would not recommend I'm full throttle up just to keep it from hitting the ground. So I would not recommend at all to do any kind of uh, flips on this one. If anything, just use this one as kind of a slow camera bird. I am noticing now that the FPV got a little weird. It seemed like it was clear in the first part of the flight, but now if you can see this on the screen, there's a little, a lot of lines in the FPV. Maybe the camera's overheating or something. I'm not too sure. Um, anyway, let's do a range test while we still got some battery power. So I'm going to pick it up at maybe about 100 feet here. And um, while I'm up here, let me just take a couple of photos. So there's a picture. And you know what? It looks like it did stop the recording. Take a couple more pictures, and then we'll restart the video recording. So here's what you can expect for some pictures. I'll have those popping up on the screen. Let me go ahead and go back into video recording. There we go. So the recording started again on the video. And let's just kind of do a range test. So we're going to fly out here. I noticed the video is kind of getting broken up a little bit, but not too bad. It's just kind of getting breaking, breaking up a bit. So we're going to go up a little higher. So I'm about 200 feet, I think, away. I'm just going to go all the way across the park here. And I'm kind of rolling back and forth. Oh, there we go. Okay, so looking at about there, yeah. So it was cutting in and out of uh, maybe the video is kind of weird because my antenna was facing back. So I have the antenna a little more perpendicular to the craft now. That's what you want to do with your um, videos. You want to make sure that this antenna is perpendicular to where the craft is. I had it down like this, so that's probably why it was getting a little scratchy. Anyway, it looked like 250 to 300 feet is the range on that. The control was kind of dropping out. Um, it's a good thing that I have uh, some wind blowing towards me, so when it does drop out, it just drifts back. So that's what you can expect for range. And let's go ahead and play with this camera. So this camera is touted to have a um, remote tilt function. So I'm gonna press down. I'm going to tilt the camera down to the ground, all the way down as far as it can go. And that looks like that's about as far as it can go. And then I'm going to go full throttle up. And let's see what kind of uh, full tilt down shot we can get and push it all the way up. Get the quad up here. I'm going as high as I possibly can safely. All right, so not bad. The camera is working great as far as uh, got a little drop out there. We're still okay. So that's the camera facing all the way down. I'm going to push it all the way up by hitting the trim and pressing the trim up like this. Now the camera's leveling out. Looks like it's a little more windy up there, so it's blowing it back towards me. And it looks like the video is kind of chopping in and out. You know, and that's only maybe 250, 300 feet away. It looked like when it was getting a little more over me, it was dropping out pretty bad. But um, now that I'm a little more forward at an angle, the video is actually pretty good. But you can see that there in the screen, hopefully. The video is not bad. So here we go. Just going to kind of bring it down a little bit. Oh, you know what? The video... What's up with the video? Okay, it looks like that was our battery. <laughs> so there we go. So it looked like our battery was getting low when I was up there. The video cut out on the FPV. And um, I'm hoping maybe it saved that video. I'm not sure, but gosh, I hope so. 
So the video completely cut out when we were kind of losing power and it was dropping and you could see how it kind of hit the ground. So that's kind of our time there for the flight. I see the lights are blinking on the bottom. So yeah, that was a low voltage, kind of a low voltage landing. And looks like the battery door kind of popped open. But everything else looks okay. I don't see any bent propellers or anything. That was just kind of a slow, a slow descent into kind of a crash. So anyway, what can I say about this thing? So um, pros and cons real quick. The um, video looked really good at first, but then it got a little weird and grainy after a while. I don't know if that's maybe an overheating uh, video camera transmitter video transmitter VTX possibly let me go ahead and turn this off otherwise the video was pretty good you know the range 250 to 300 feet out was kind of expecting maybe a little more but um, with these toy grade transmitters like this without really a designated external antenna for the control that's kind of what you can expect for these the headless mode and the return to home you can see it was completely skewed in the opposite uh, different direction than what I launched from it was actually going back was going to the right you know what I mean so that's I wouldn't use the headless or the return to home on this one for sure and then as far as the video um, I'll have that have had that on the screen and so you can kind of see the video and the pictures and see what to expect from this camera definitely a pro on this you can tilt it down remotely so that's way cool you know for somebody that's just getting into quads and maybe started with a small small one and wanted to kind of move up in size and have some FPV capabilities with some remote camera tilting. I'd say this is a great next step for that. Just be careful of the range and I'm not sure what was up with that uh, FPV after a while. You could also see the lift was really slow, the descending was really slow, the flipping, um, a pretty bad con on this. I don't know why they even included the flipping because it seemed to like flip and then lose like 30 feet of altitude when it did flip uh, so I don't know what was up with that but I would not flip with this I would not use the return to home or the the headless on this everything else was pretty good you know and I had that altitude hold worked great so that is a big pro on this to have that altitude hold anyway guys I hope you like the review I do a lot of reviews like this and also you can find the link for this don't forget down in the video description under there where you can click on that see the current pricing and also um, all the specs from that link if you want to know more specs on this one go ahead and click that and see what it's all about anyway thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.